This is In the Trenches Broadcast 38. Welcome to In the Trenches, where entrepreneurs, artists, writers, designers, inventors, warriors, and leaders share their stories of doing the hard, creative work that impacts all of our lives. Let the journey inspire you to do something worthwhile, build something bold, and create your life's work. And now, your host, Tom Morgus. Welcome back, everyone, to another broadcast of In the Trenches. Today's guest is Darren Steele, and he's the founder of FeetMoveBe.com a website devoted to helping you live a healthy lifestyle through healthy eating. Darren, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the call. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself and Eat, Move, Be. I'll try to make that brief. (laughs) Uh, Well, I live in Toronto, Canada, and uh, my background, I guess, in the last decade, in about the last decade, I got into uh, personal training. Um, and I've had the cooking background since I guess about being 19, 20 years old, I went to cooking school for a year, absolutely loved it, but realized that I didn't want to be a chef full time because it's actually an incredibly stressful occupation. So I stayed for the year to get my certification and it's been an incredibly valuable life skill. So the funny thing is that, at least the way I look at it, I've been doing bulk cooking, cooking for myself uh, before going to cook school, cooking school, and then you know much more, I guess, expertly, and then eventually, you know, intuitively for years and years and years following that. And you know, I was in a pseudo corporate world, and then transitioned into personal training. And it's maybe only been in the last couple of years I realized, wow, I've got this great skill with cooking. Why am I not doing something with it? And I guess, yeah, not last year, but in 2000, late 2012, I launched a site called allaboutmealplanning.com. And that was pretty much um, kind of a pages-based site providing information, so static pages. And about a year into that, I realized it wasn't quite what I wanted to do, so... Um, I got involved with uh, Fizzle, which you're involved with as well, and really had to dig into what have I been doing, what do I want to do, how do I want to present my material, how do I want to want to combine the fact that I've had this meal planning website, that I've got a personal blog that I like to talk about, sometimes fitness, uh, personal development, wellness, but that I seem to be writing mostly about healthy eating and creating recipes. And so, you know, after doing a lot of homework, I created or or started to build towards and then eventually launched in March of this year, eatmovebe.com. So I'll pass it back to you at this point. Yeah, for sure. So I'm curious about this. You you have this background at at culinary, right? Yeah. And then now you you, you recognize that, hey, there's this great opportunity, you have this great skill set, this great knowledge that, again, not many people actually have. Um, and you wanted to leverage that in some kind of online business. Is that correct? That's kind of the basis of it? Very much, yes. And so now tell me about doing that because I know that the fitness health space is, generally speaking, a pretty competitive you know, market. Mm-hmm. And so how do you, how did you, and, and, and since you're in physical, you know, I know that a lot of that is it's about educating and, and I'm, obviously I'm a part of it and, and figuring out like what, your, what your business model is going to be, you know, how, what, what your angle is going to be, how you're going to deliver content and things like that. So when you stepped into this world, what were, what were your thoughts on it? You kind of mentioned the static page thing. I'm kind of curious about that and how you, why and how you made that switch. Most importantly, why you made that switch, kind of how it's designed now and what you're doing with the platform. Okay. There's a couple of uh, big questions in there. Sorry. That's, sometimes that's what I do. So just take them as you can and I'll re- remind you as we go. Oh, no, that's perfect. Um, well, the niche is definitely challenging. And when I was writing for my, my personal blog, I realized, you know, I wasn't getting enough hits because I was writing too, too general. And uh, that's when I went to the allaboutmealplanning.com. And the, the system I was using or the company I was using and how they taught was try to really focus in on one or two major keywords per page, uh, not trying to trick 
Google, but trying to please Google and trying to please the reader by providing valuable content that might get shared and then might get linked to as being a content provider. So I, I got this idea of, ah, I'm providing content for the web. And, you know, what am I going to do with this content in the future? What I found restrictive about uh, the All About Meal Planning website is that I guess I'm more of a conversationalist, a talker, and I wanted to be constantly updating and have, I really understood and related better to sort of the blog feed concept. Now, you know, most websites are built on some sort of a WordPress type platform. Some do, some don't have blogs. And certainly I need to have some static pages on my, my eatmovebe.com website, but to be constantly updating to get people to follow you more so. And I think this uh, blog allows for more engagement. That's the, the direction I wanted to go in. And plus, you know, there's more freedom with WordPress, what you can do with plugins. So there's a technical and an aesthetic and a conversational advantage to me, you know, s switching between the two. And addressing your other question about like the challenges of the niche, like fitness is huge and so is food blogging. So, you know, I had to ask myself, why the hell am I trying to get into this market? And when I first started in sort of the, and I'm not like a hundred percent or traditional food blogger, I was just using my iPhone and you, you can't compete in this world. Um, you know, unless you're doing some pretty stellar pictures with your iPhone, but what really captures the eye for food photography is depth of field. And you've got to have a better quality camera where you can play with your F-stop and lighting, which you aren't able to do with an iPhone, for example. So one of the great things about Fizzle was some of the courses that they help you try and define your audience and try and really determine the, the topic or the niche. And, you know, are there, is there overlap that might, you know, bring you closer to what that is. So, you know, I do have a fitness bent, but I'm really not talking about that. It's sort of, let's call it um, uh, not, not subconscious on my site, but it's in the background. So my, my approach to health is coming from like a fitness and health background. How I'm cooking, how I'm presenting my food is coming from that background as well. Um, and trying to integrate both a wellness perspective with um, a healthy food blogging perspective. You know, going forward, I, I see that I want to be at two posts per week, one recipe per week, and maybe a three to 500 word um, article that addresses nutrition or wellness or some sort of healthy approach or talking about a particular type of food and why that's good for you or nutrition planning or meal planning. So instead of just another pretty recipe or the current trend, Oh, yay, I made vegan chocolate chip cookies or I made, you know, gluten free banana bread, um, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm also getting so tired of like, do vegans only eat sweets? <laughs> so I'm not meaning to offend anybody here when I say that. But if you do a search, uh, what sells most? Well, great photography. What sells best? Second, a sweet. Everybody wants to eat something like that. That looks absolutely delicious, right? Is it good for you? Well, sure, in moderation. Uh, but I'm not bringing, you know, sweets at the moment to my blog. Uh, and that's what yeah, I guess that's what I'm trying to present or trying to make myself stand out. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because you so you have the chef background, right? And that's, that's again, that's like you said, it's a, it's a difficult field. Not many people are chefs. And then but you also have a background as, as a certified nutrition coach, uh, coach and fitness trainer. So yeah. it's like uh, that seems pretty, pretty rare. Would you? Is, I mean, you, you kind of stand out in the market. I mean, that that kind of seems like an unfair advantage for you in this, in this, uh, in this niche. Yeah. Yeah. In some ways, I, I I certainly gave some thought to how could I pull all those things together, and I thought, oh yeah, great. You know, I can blog about uh, personal training, uh, fitness and exercise programs, uh, recipes, personal development, and like. It, if anyone's, you know, got a website that's listening to this, they're like, yeah, this guy's crazy. You can't write about this many things at once. And I learned, I realized that very quickly. And, you know, I, I sort of dropped off the uh, fitness training aspect because I, there's only so much time in the day. And I think it's also being aware what 
are you most skilled at? What are you most passionate about? And what I'm doing right now with Eat, Move, Be, doing these recipes or what led into a, a book that I published a couple of weeks ago, teaching people how to cook a week of meals, you know, in one go, that's, that's what I feel sets me apart and, and how I want to make myself unique in this industry. Now, if I could bring some other things together to make Eat, Move, Be a total health, fitness, healthy eating and wellness website, that would be amazing. That might, but that might require some sort of a partnership with somebody in the future. Whether that happens or not, I have no idea. Yeah, so tell me about your book, Cook a Week of Meals in Four Hours. Yeah, so this has been something um, – it wasn't quite on the back burner earlier this year, but I've had an idea for doing some form of a meal planning book since I started allaboutmealplanning.com, but I hadn't quite put my finger on how to do it. And again, in this niche, there, there are a number of sites that are doing meal planning, but how they tend to work is uh, some are free or some are subscription-based, and they're maybe giving you a meal plan for the week. Go out and buy all your groceries. Perhaps they're giving you some options to select. Perhaps uh, some of the better ones are giving you options, whether you're a vegan or trying to eat paleo or whether you have a gluten intolerance. So they'll have maybe some variations on the recipe. So then you can print out your recipe or ingredients list, go shopping, and then cook your meals. But you're not cooking in bulk. You are usually got a prescription for, here's what you're going to cook on Monday night. And here's what you're going to cook on Tuesday. And so it doesn't address like, you know, what maybe snacks you want to have in the day or the fact that you're still going to have to come home after a long day of work and, and cook a meal. So long day of work, cook a meal. For a lot of people, it's like, forget it. We're just going to go out and we're going to pick up something, uh, whether it be a pseudo healthy takeout or go out to a restaurant. So what I wanted to present um, in my book was a very straightforward and simple approach um, to how you can plan your week of meals, go out, buy all of your groceries at once, and then get everything done within two and a half to four hours tops, like on a Saturday or Sunday, if you're working on a Monday to Friday, get it done, have all your meals ready, prepared, ready to eat. You just have to heat them up when you come home or put them in some form of, you know, uh, Tupperware or to-go container to take it with you for lunch. And so I spent a lot of time and effort really thinking, well, how do I present this to people so that A, it comes across as easy enough to do so that even the person that's never cooked could look at this and think, I can do this. Um, and allowing people the chance to take like a, a, an easy step, like maybe just cook a single meat meal and one of the vegetable meals do this a couple of times to get more comfortable in the kitchen and then do one of the sort of meal plan options that I present or the person that knows how to cook and say, huh, this looks great. I, you know, I'm cooking for three people at home. So let's go get this. Let's do it. And so far I'm getting some really good feedback from people that have, have approached it a couple of ways. One person uh, just went right in, uh, picked one of the meal plans, bought the groceries, did it and found it easy to do and easy to follow because I try and, or I don't try, I, I provide a sequence. You know, here's what you do first. Like it might be putting, turning on the oven and starting with this vegetable and that vegetable because some things take less time and some things take more time to cook. And when, when you're presented with a number of recipes, but you don't know how to cook in bulk, that can be the biggest and most frustrating sort of elephant in the room for, for someone. It's like, how should I do this? What sequence should I do this? So I've broken that down. And someone else uh, wrote back to me saying, uh, and this woman is, is based in New Zealand. So she said, well, you had suggested this, but this is not in season here. And this was in season. So I substituted this ingredient for that ingredient, or my boyfriend doesn't like beets. So instead I used cabbage and she followed the process. She followed the recipes with some substitutions, which I think is great. And got a great result at the end by having meals ready for the week in both cases. Yeah, you know, my background is actually in the military. And as a, a guy in the military, single, with no culinary background or, or any skills at all whatsoever when it came to cooking good food. <coughs> I, and, and also, I, <laughs> it's just exactly what you said. I was like, this is the perfect book. 
it would have been the perfect book for me. Luckily, I got married, so that was the shortcut. <laughs> but it also is funny because while I bring that up kind of a, a little bit of a joke, it also reminds me like that would be a great market potentially for something like this, you know, yeah. single military people. And that now I want to ask you the question is how do you reach people with something like this? Again, we're talking the crowded market space. How do you go out and actually, how do you spread the word? How do you get people interested in this? How do they find you? You know, tell me a little bit about that, that, that process. I think you've hit on the thing that's, you know, probably the most challenging for all uh, online entrepreneurs. And, you know, I have to be honest and I have to be pretty um, aware of the fact that I'm, you know, extremely, extremely small fish in this sea of, you know, online uh, cookbooks and other people that are, you know, providing really awesome health and wellness information. And that my site's only been out since March. <clears throat> so it's, it's a constant challenge to figure out, A, how do you want to market yourself and what tools do you use? So, you know, thankfully, Fizzle does some really good teaching about this. Um, uh, you know, there are, there are useful plugins that you can use to help with that. Um, Sumo Me seems to be the one that a lot of people are using to provide some sort of like a light box pop-up. Um, and it, but it, what it all boils down to still at the, at, you know, at the core or the foundation is you have to start with quality content and you still have to market. So, you know, if you have quality content and you don't market, no one's going to come to you. Um, it's surprising how many people are going to come to you if you seem to be offering quality contact, but your co content, but you're really just, you know, jerking people around and those people are going to come to your site and they're going to find out that this is not a value. Um, yeah, spending a lot of time, we're spending more time trying to learn how to, how to write better from a copy and proofing perspective and, you know, a sales page. How do you, how do you flow that page? These are things that I'm still learning and getting better at. And in some cases I've had to work with some other people to help me because, you know, other people are better at copy editing and, and writing a sales page than I am. And that's the time when you may have to hire somebody on a, you know, an hour or two hour basis to help you with that. Um, certainly I'm using the social media channels and yeah, I don't profess to understand them all, but I think I'm getting better at understanding um, some of the people that are following me and, and what I'm seeing. So to know, you know how often to promote, um, there's, there's definitely the sharing of other people's content People talk about the 80-20 ratio, 80% 80 share of other people's content. But the thing that I've really been focusing on in the last couple of days, it's, uh, you know, it's come from a lot of reading and it just became really clear is I need to take my social media when I'm sharing and put more of me into it. So even if I'm sharing somebody else's stuff, I probably get more people interested in what I'm sharing if I express an opinion or ask a question or entice more instead of just doing, this is a great recipe from this other site link, you know, no one cares. But if you can tell somebody, somebody something with value, I think that's, that's more important. So that's step one. Uh, step two is what I'm doing here with you. For example, um, getting the word out by doing a podcast interview, um, asking for reviews, from the people that have bought the book, uh, doing guest posts in one of uh, two directions. Uh, could be me offering a guest post, something to do with the book or something specific for someone else's site. And then having uh, in my signature, you know, Darren Steele, who I am. Darren's just published a book, brief description. Um, and, and book review. So I know someone that's going to do a book review on her site, but also provide me a, a sort of a testimonial type review that I can publish as a guest post on my own site. So I think the latter, you know, interviews and guest posts are probably the most effective. Again, you've got that communication, you've got that level of trust with um, a, a different site's readers that are more interested in reading what's said there than a random tweet. As far as, you, and you may have already touched on this, and, and you kind of have, but I want to just confirm, what would you say is the greatest struggle that you've had at building a platform from scratch? Is it, is it this kind of marketing and sales channel development? Uh, 
Marketing is a is probably one of the greatest. Um, at the beginning, it might have been all the technical. Um, I, I, I recently signed up for another training uh, site called foodbloggerpro.com, uh, similar to Fizzle in a way, but specifically focused on helping food bloggers. And I was going through all their back-end videos. And I was like, oh, I wish I had known about these people before I started. Uh, because so many of the videos in the sections are providing answers to questions that I struggled with, that things I didn't know how to do or plugins I wasn't sure about or how to get or how to work with them, you know, j- just to get grounded. Because I guess the first step is get grounded. Maybe you're going to take a couple months or however long to actually you know, work on your site before you go live. That, that was one part of it. But going forward, this is you know, the biggest concern. How do you market how do you speak to people? How do you attract people? What's the balance between too much and too little? And uh, everything in between. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, it, that was a question I had in terms of struggle. And I, then I was going to ask, what, what is the solution? Or not, and not, not from like a tactical level, but mm-hmm. from an overarching, like, if I have this problem, then kind of a universal, like, this is a struggle. I understand these things. What's, what is, what's the way to go about solving that problem? And you kind of answered it. You basically said you basically you you, you searched out the information um, and you found the right platforms, the right training program to give you that that edge or to to cut out the agony of learning it through trial and error. Is that about right? Absolutely. I mean, at the at the moment, I'm working part time, so my income has restricted what I can invest in. So usually I'm able to invest in um, some online training uh, because that's, you know, perhaps based on more people buying that training. So it's a lower entry, uh, but that, that, you know, and and usually you can get extremely good quality. I go back to Fizzle, like the, the value I get out of Fizzle from their training and from being able to talk to other members in the forum has been a lifesaver. The, the assistance I've got, you know, they say, you you know, you can't work alone. And not that I have a business partner, but I've had so much help um, with respect to answering questions or some little technical CSS thing that somebody who does that full time said, OK, Darren, here's the code that you need. And I plunk it in and it works, um, you know, but going forward, I think I think it's also about as you get busier, as you start to see revenue increase, then you might be able to invest um, into something perhaps a little bit more costly or, you know, that could take you to that next level. So, you know, do I want to take some thousand dollar um, per year or a thousand dollar one hit type program that's going to teach me everything I need to know about uh, Facebook marketing and advertising at the moment? No, but you know, if I had 500 or a thousand, um, you know, regular customers that are always buying from me, that's, that's a different story. So, you know, in the beginning, it's like, you almost have to do all the work yourself. You have to learn through the school of hard knocks. You have to learn by doing, um, and, and everybody's going to come at it from a different perspective. Somebody might come in with money saved or money that they can invest in their new online business. And that might help them get further along more quickly because perhaps they have an assistant or perhaps someone designed their site, um, you know, or whatever it is they're investing in that saves them time, but allows them to focus in on their, their greatest skill sets for, you know, that is going to propel them forward. That's awesome. Thanks, Darren, for that. I appreciate that. Well, hey, you know, we're coming up to the the the, the time mark here. Got to wrap it up. But I thought this was hugely informative. I like taking a look at the kind of grassroots of a platform that's being developed. The one I think is going to be successful. Uh, you know, you have the, the background for it. You have the talent for it. The stuff you're creating is awesome. It's, it's getting good reviews. So I'm excited to see where it goes from here. But I want to give the stage back to you and tell us where people can reach out and connect with you. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Um, easiest place to find me is on my website, which is eatmovebee.com. Uh, I've got a couple places where you can find out more about my uh, book, but I also have a direct link, which is cookaweekofmeals.com. Uh, I'm on Twitter under my name. Uh, I probably won't even bother to spell it here. You just go to my site, eatmovebee.com. You can click on one of the links for Twitter. And... Um, 
Where am I going next? That's a good question. Uh, I think my, 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 my next steps forward are um, to actually get some seasonal recipes up. That's been one of the, the, the more interesting challenges is to uh, uh, plan ahead of time. And I think I finally got to that point where I feel my website is uh, solid enough that I can uh, start preparing things in advance. So I'm looking forward to getting up to that, those two posts a week. And uh, I guess one more thing. Um, when you go to my site, not only is it my paid book, but I do have a free ebook, Healthy Meals and Snacks. And that's really the foundation of my approach uh, to health and wellness, how you can either uh, make choices for what you could eat during the day or what you can buy if you're near a food court uh, or don't cook for yourself. That's a healthier choice than doing the traditional, you know, Starbucks and uh, some sugar laden muffin of sorts. And that wraps up another broadcast of In the Trenches. If you're interested in checking out the show notes, just head over to tomworkers.com slash podcast to see our latest episodes. Also, I just wanted to give a quick update to fans and listeners of In the Trenches and specifically what I'm working on right now. For the past two years, I've been publishing books, my own and others, through Insurgent Publishing, my boutique publishing company. In the past six months alone, I've helped four individual authors launch their books to bestseller on Amazon, including Dan Norris's The Seven Day Startup and David Nihill's Do You Talk Funny, among others. And both of those books are still top of the charts months after launch. I've learned two important things from all this. Number one, that people still read books. And believe it or not, they're willing to pay for the good ones. And number two, the $60 billion book industry is only getting bigger and the barrier to entry is only getting lower, which means access to this market has never been closer to the average writer, blogger, or author. It is literally within the grasp of anyone who wants it. But you need to know how to approach it the right way, with patience, with a strategy, and with the right implementation and execution. That's why I've been able to launch so many bestsellers, many that are still top of the charts, because we brought great books to the people who wanted and would pay for them. No slimy sales tactics, just honest, powerful marketing. Now, I want to show other authors and publishers how to do the same. Four months ago, I launched the pre-beta to a new super secret platform called Publishers Empire. In that time, I've helped a dozen authors and publishers start to bring their ideas to life. And with their help and feedback, we've quickly developed what is, in my opinion, the best, most comprehensive publishing training platform in the world. And now I'm getting ready to open the doors up to a few more students. So if you're interested in being part of a tight-knit family of publishers who help and support one another through their writing and publishing projects, if you want access to over 100 HT training videos to take you through the writing and publishing process, if you want access to proven copy and paste book marketing and sales copy, stuff that we've used to launch bestsellers, and if you'd like professional book covers and templates you could plug your own work into and look like a pro in minutes, and if you'd like all of that, while getting the chance to be mentored by me, check out PublishersEmpire.com and sign up to be notified when we launch. That's www.PublishersEmpire.com. I hope to see you there. As always, this is Tom Morcus. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance. Thank you for listening to In the Trenches. Your creative work doesn't stop here. Join the resistance, the small but growing army of entrepreneurs and artists putting a dent in the world at www.tommorkis.com. Never fight alone. Join the resistance. <laughs>